Episode 1 of This Town starts with us jetting back in time to Birmingham, 1981, specifically Ron Lozell's Road. This is the dawn of the Age of Love, at least according to our protagonist, Dante. There are riots in the street and the police are lined up, hitting anybody that steps forward. Dante is chased off by several cops and a rather menacing dog. Despite Dante's insistence he's not part of the riots, they don't believe him and chase him. After eventually eluding the police, Dante bumps into an old friend, Jeannie. She talks to him about how he's feeling, but Dante is heartbroken after getting rejected by a girl at college called Fiona. As they talk, the attention turns across to Dante's brother, Greg Williams. He's over in Belfast and part of the armed guard, trying to hold back riots of his own. When things calm down, Dante and Jeannie head outside and the former revels in the sound of birdsong. With smoke rising, clinging to the air, the pair head back to the estate. As they do, those over in Belfast contemplate what's taken place and Dante's brother, who happens to be sergeant of this brigade, also notices the birdsong too. He even leaves the armed vehicle they're in to take it all in, until bullets are sprayed his way of course. Unbelievable. At Hillside Estate in Coventry, we meet another new character, Barden Quinn. Everything that seems to stitch these characters together is sound, which is pretty unique, and more specifically here, birdsong. Barden gets ready for college and he says goodbye to his nan, who tries to keep him on the straight and narrow. That's easier said than done though, given Barden is picked up by his dad, Eamon, and they take 28 traffic cones on the highway. Barden is most certainly not going to college here. He's very much wrapped up in the riots too. He doesn't want to be, but his pa is being pressured that his son isn't pulling his weight by the organisation he works for. That could cause an insurrection within the organisation, so Barden has no choice but to get to work. Barden's nan, Marie, is concerned about Barden and goes to confession to speak to the priest about this. However, he tells her she needs to stop talking, trying to protect her, and tells her to go back home. Unfortunately, Marie's questions bring a friend of Eamon's over to her house. Marie is visibly shaken when the woman indirectly threatens her, pointing out that she's a nurse and Marie needs to stop getting involved otherwise something bad is going to happen to her. Jeannie brings Dante along with her to the Villa Bingo Hall. The place is surprisingly untouched given the devastation in the streets around it and it's here where she mentioned this is their HQ. They've been allocated a van load of liberated goods to head off to the Happy Trooper pub. It's dance night in less than 24 hours and they need to move the gear. Dante is mesmerised by a spacesuit and decides to take it along with them. Jeannie explains here that Dante has the look and that he looks like he could be someone if he wants to be. Dante does eventually make it to the Chelmsley Wood estate where he recites a beautiful poem before heading into the fire and speaking to his father. They talk about love and Dante's broken heart while it's clear that Dante's father, Juice, is a holy man. Dante soon leaves though with his spacesuit and heads over to see a guy called Mr. Carmen. Now Greg used to work for him as head of security at his club and with him gone, Carmen's security has become pretty lapse. He's part of one of the big organisations in town. In fact, Carmen tells Dante about a rather unnerving story where he chopped a man's finger off a causing a ruckus inside the club. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Remember this, because it will come back later. Carmen tries to hand over a business card, telling Dante he should come work and can make a grand just for looking like he does. Dante refuses though and walks away. However, he does leave the spacesuit there and his plan to change the venue for the organisation seems to have worked. Dante, with a new wave of confidence, heads off to the record store. There, he speaks to Fiona, who happens to be working behind the counter. He locks eyes with her while he listens to a record and she eventually tells him that he's not completely wasting his time with her. That is, after she perks up from him telling her he was struck by a policeman earlier that day. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Meanwhile, Barden tells Eamon he wants to be his own man. That's not something his dad takes kindly to and he heads upstairs to see Marie, his nan, with his dad still going ballistic in the car. Unfortunately, Marie is on the floor, dead after suffering a heart attack from the stress of it all. Now we see the connection between everything. Barden is Dante's cousin, so all of these guys are family. As for Sergeant Greg Williams, he's reprimanded by his superior for his behaviour. Asking kids to just sing together and heading out the van to listen to birdsong are not what's expected of him in the service. Instead of throwing him through the system, Greg is to be let go for three days of compassionate leave following Marie's death. The episode then closes out with one more look at Dante. He stands unnervingly on top of a bridge overlooking the motorway. Jeannie arrives and suggests that he get involved in music with her. Specifically, she's going to let him do the words and she'll do the music. Thanks for watching and do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Smash a like or subscribe to the channel, your support is very much appreciated. I'm Greg Wheeler and from all of us over here at The Review Geek, we'll see you on the next video.